Move the mouse here and it's time to update the how-to series for 2019. Previously I'd done a series on my channel that goes through a lot of the different mechanics in the game and enough of those have changed with some of the DLCs and other things that are out now. So let's go ahead and dive in, create a city from the ground up, and take you through all the different mechanics that you need to know to be a successful mayor in city skylines. So for this one, I'm going to be using one of the park life maps called Mountain Meadows. We'll just take the default name. We'll use right hand traffic because that's what I'm used to. And the only thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to turn off day night cycle so that it's always day. It's going to be a little bit easier to see. And we're going to do everything else default. So no mods, no cheats, just some vanilla gameplay. And we're going to take you through each one of the milestones, all the little bits of information that you might need to know that you might be wondering about. Hopefully we'll be covering in this series. Now that we're in game, the first thing that we want to do is pause it. So we're going to click the left stick in on consoles. We're going to hit the space bar on PC to pause time because basically everything that we do costs money and then it costs money to maintain it as well. So your roads, your pipes, your electricity have an ongoing maintenance cost. And if we're building stuff but don't have people moving in, then we're not making any tax revenue and we're actually just losing money. So pausing it at the start is very important. Now, so we've got a, a tile to work with here and we've got water access, which is gonna be very important in a minute. But the first thing we really need to do is come up with a way for people to get on and off the highway in and out of our city. So when you first start out, you only have the small roads unlocked. So what we can do is make one tiny little segment of road. And then on Xbox, I'm gonna hit the X button. On PlayStation, the square button. And on PC, I believe the B button. At least that's what I've mapped it to for the bulldozer. And we're gonna destroy that piece of road. And why we did that is because now we've unlocked one-way roads, four-lane roads, and six-lane roads. So that gives us some different options here. And the thing that I want to do is start out with a basic rotary or roundabout here. Now, in order to create that circle, what we're going to do, hold the Y button on Xbox, triangle on PlayStation. And there's actually a curved road tool in the bottom left on PC that you can select. So now that we're drawing curved segments, what we're going to do is with the one way two lane road, I'm going to come out about 10 units, and that's when that, that big line appears. That's about 10 units. It's actually 9. That would be 10. But I'm going to hit the A button there, X on PlayStation, or left click on PC. And I'm just going to repeat that. So I'm going to hit the button to confirm. And then where do we want to take that curve out to? We want to make a nice roundabout here to dump people off the highway and to get people back on. This isn't necessary right off the bat, but as your city grows, you're going to want some ways to move traffic around. And if there aren't intersections and it just keeps people flowing, roundabouts and rotaries help out quite a bit there. So we've got this circle set up. Now what we want to do is kind of curve that in as naturally as we can. So if we just come in here straight with the road, people are going to have to come to the end of it, make a 90 degree turn. So what we want to do is we want to kind of curve it in just ever so slightly to keep people moving. So let's let's try it with the freeform tool. There we go. The freeform tool is a little bit better at creating that curve that we want. So now you get this smoother, smoother turn. It's a little bit easier on PC if you use a mod like Move It. But again, we're doing this kind of all vanilla in-game mechanics. So now we've got a way onto the rotary and off of the rotary. And I say rotary, that's uh, a New England term. You may know them as roundabouts. Technically they are different. Rotaries connect to the highway. Roundabouts connect usually smaller local roads. But now you see we've got one that's going in the wrong direction. We want this one to lead back out to the highway. So holding Y or triangle on Xbox or PlayStation and then going to the change direction tool let us do just that the tool that you're looking for in pc is the exclamation point in the bottom left when you're using the road tools if you left click a road that will upgrade to whatever type of road you have highlighted or right clicking will change the direction of that road so we've got a very basic entrance and exit to the highway 
And now we can start to build some neighborhoods off of that. So just to keep things kind of neat, I'm gonna to come to this nine o'clock position here and I'm gonna come out three big lines, that's 30 units. Because we wanna minimize how often our intersections are, especially where we're gonna have more traffic and right here is gonna be kind of a, a central congestion point. So we wanna keep the intersections away from that if possible. And now we can start to spin up some neighborhoods for our residents to live in. Now, if we come back 10 units, see how the zoning kind of lines up? And that's if you wanna create a really tight grid. If you wanna space things out a little bit though and leave room for things like footpaths, bicycle paths, and other things, you can come out a little bit further and say come out 12 units. And that gives you a little bit of room to, to then again, bring stuff in between the zones. Now we have room to maybe do a footpath or even just some decorative trees to space things out a bit. Gives you some options down the road. Now I'm gonna come out another 30 units because again, we don't want the intersections on the main roads to be too close together. As we get further and further from the highway, your intersections can get closer and closer. So highway, you want your exits pretty far apart to keep things moving. And then as you get off the highway, you have these arterial roads that flow most of the traffic through the city, just like arteries flow blood through the body. You want those arteries to handle most of your traffic in the city. And then you have collector or local roads that you can, again, start to get closer and closer with the intersections as you move away from those main roads. So we're just gonna do maybe a couple blocks for right now like this. So again, think of this as kind of our, our main street, little downtown area in a small town. We'll put commercial zoning off of here and then we'll move the residents in behind. Now you notice we won't be able to build off the edge of the map just yet. We will be able to buy more tiles later. So I may not actually zone that but we can deal with that problem in a moment. Let's get one more block down here. And these are, I am gonna make a little bit tighter and put them kind of right on top of one another. And we're just doing kind of a grid like that. Now you can completely get free form and flow these roads, but this is just a nice, easy way to start your city. And we'll get looser with the roads and, and do some different patterns as we progress a bit. But this is just a good way to start out nice and simple. Now we'll do the same thing over here. I'm gonna come up 30 units. In this case, I wanna make some room for things like industrial, power, um, different utilities and services for the city because the residents don't wanna live right next to those. They cause pollution, they're noisy, uh, have a lot of truck traffic and people just generally don't wanna live next to them. So we'll separate that out a bit. Now we're at $52,000 right now, which is basically where I like to be when I'm finished doing my road networks. At this point, we wanna save some money to do some of our other basic utilities. We've got roads, we've got a way in and out of the highway. Now we need to do water, power, and zoning. So let's get the zoning out of the way first. What we need to zone is indicated by the demand meters in the bottom right of the screen. There'll be vertical bars on the PC of three different colors, green, blue, and yellow. And you can see them in the bottom right of the console UI. Now, the first one that we have demand for is a place for residential. People want to move into the town and we really need that first. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in to these back neighborhoods and zone those off first. So we're just going to fill all that in. Now on this main street, because it's a little noisier and busier, we're gonna do commercial zoning. Now there's different ways you can paint things in. I've got the fill tool turned on right now. It's a little paint bucket, but we can also go to a marquee tool or a paintbrush if we wanna get very specific about what we're filling in. Now buildings will move in four units from the road, any further than that, and they, they won't actually take advantage of that zoning. So I'm gonna highlight all of this and again, make this kind of our main street. I want all of our businesses to be here. And this is gonna be a little bit more traffic, 
in behind that is where all the residents are going to be. And now I can switch back to my fill tool because it's not going to overwrite a zone. I can click it all I want. It's not going to overwrite a zone. It's already there. Now, if you make a mistake, two ways that you can dezone, or you can go to the dezone tool and basically paint it again to remove a zone. Or another useful trick is the X button or square button on Xbox and PlayStation or right clicking with a zone will actually dezone that too. So you don't have to switch over to the dezone tool. You can just hit that right click or X or square to be able to dezone something and then change it. So if I had the, the blue commercial zone tool out, for example, I can't overwrite it, but I can click that button to dezone and then basically rezone it. So we'll do that. Now we don't have that demand for commercial yet, but it will appear soon enough. The other thing that we'll get a demand for is industrial. And we can fill that in over here with this little space that we've defined. We'll need more than that after a little while, but it's a good enough zone to get us started. Now, the next thing that we have to worry about is power. And what we're gonna do here is choose a power plant. Now, depending on what map you're on, you might have good wind. Basically, the darker the blue, the better the support is, and this will get up to eight megawatts. I'm gonna go with the high polluting option though, and use the coal power plant. It's more expensive, it produces more power, but ultimately it's gonna take up less area than having a bunch of these spread out across our coast. I just like it's a matter of personal preference. Whichever way you go, it's up to you. It's your city. So we've got power. Now we've got to come up with water, both pumping water into the city as well as getting sewage out. So we're going to go to the water pumping option here. And when we do that, you'll notice that the water has these arrows in it. Now that is the direction of the water flow. So we can, we don't want to go too far because we have to run power to it. So we'll come over here and then I want to grab my sewage pipe and put it downstream. So important. If you put the sewage pipe upstream, sewage is going to flow out of that tube and then back in your drinking supply. And that's a really quick way to get your citizens sick. It's actually a useful trick for unlocking one of the unique buildings, but that is a topic for a much later episode. So for now, let's make sure that we've got a little bit of distance. That's probably more than I needed to do. But put some distance in between your water intake and the sewage output. So now I've switched over to the pipe tool and it will snap to these buildings. We've got to get that water over to where our residents and workplaces are going to be. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up to a road. And I'm going to kind of run it parallel with that just to make it easier to map out. Now, a very useful trick here is you want all of your area to be covered. So any place people are, you need to get them water. If you come over $440 worth of pipe right there, that creates just this perfect little bit of overlap. And now everything in there is covered. And then we'll do that one more time going up to the top of our town. Come on, let me, well, let me, there we go. And then we'll do the same thing down here. We'll just cover everything. Now, ideally we don't wanna to waste too much and overlap things more than we need to, especially early on because money's tight when you're first starting out your city. The last thing that we need to do is we need to get the electricity over to the water stations and over to where people are gonna be moving in. So we do that with power lines. Now, if you put these over zoning, it's gonna basically remove the ability for buildings to move in on that zone. I'm gonna go kind of around my zoning here and I'm just gonna bring this down to the sewage. Now, anywhere in that blue bubble will extend power. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll run a extension cord over here to the water pumping station somewhere into that blue bubble and that will pass power. Now, as buildings move in, 
they will kind of extend this blue bubble. So you don't have to run power lines everywhere. They'll pass power from building to building. But we will have to run them wherever they first move in. So rather than run random wires over there right now, we're going to hit play. And we're going to see where people move in and we'll power that first. Before we hit play, though, there's one thing that I want to do. We're creating way more power and water than we need right now, especially since we don't have anybody moved in yet. So what you can do is there's an economy button on the bottom right. You'll see it looks like a little stack of money on PC. And to get to that on consoles, you hold Y or triangle and then go over to economy. Now, once we're in here, you don't have many of the options unlocked just yet. But if we go over to the budget tab, we can control budget for power and water. And again, right now with nobody living in the city, we have way more than we need. So I'm gonna back this all the way down to 50%. Do keep in mind that there are separate budgets for day and night, Y or triangle switches between those. So if you do have day night cycle turned on, you're gonna to wanna to adjust those independently. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and hit play. So that's clicking the left stick in on consoles or hitting the space bar on PC, and that'll play it at one time speed. You can also speed things up by clicking the three little arrows in the bottom left of the screen on PC, or holding left stick in for a second, and you'll cycle through the different time values. So one time speed, two times, and three times. And now things start happening a little bit faster. We can see that our first residents are moving in. If we go over to our zoning, you'll see green is where people live. And we've got our first houses moving in already. Now, in the bottom left, you'll notice that we're actually losing money right now. So we're at negative $844. But right as I say that, we're already on the climb towards going back towards zero and eventually towards a profit. I'm going to pause it one second because now that we've got people moving in and we know where they're moving in, we need to get power over to them. I didn't zone over here, so I'm not worried about that eating into my zoning. And I'll just connect that to the blue bubble over by the power station. When we hit play, you'll see that these power lines go blue as they start passing power, which passes to this bubble, which passes power on to all the houses within that same bubble. So as long as you keep your zoning together and condensed, you don't have to run power lines everywhere. It makes things a little bit easier for you. We've also got our first commercial building moving in on our little main street here. And you'll notice that the demand for residents is starting to drop down. And that demand for commercial space is starting to climb up and down, but we've already zoned off quite a bit. So that will fill up as needed as there's more demand. Got a little DQ moving in. And now it's just kind of a waiting game. So you want to keep an eye on any icons that pop up, specifically for power and water at first, because we've turned those budgets down so far. We may need to turn them up as people move in. Now, if you want to keep an eye on things, you can hold the Y button or triangle and go to info views. You can also go to the, is it the magnifying glass in the top left of the PC interface, and that'll bring up this same UI. And now we can see what we're using for electricity versus what we're producing. Same thing with water. So we're good on those for a little bit, but again, we will have to turn those up. And this is where we can see just about anything about our city. So police and fire coverage, healthcare, education, citizen happiness and unemployment. So. As we unlock those things, we'll discuss those in more detail. Right now, what we're trying to get to is our first milestone. And every time we get to a certain population level, that's going to unlock things for our city. Again, if I hold Y or triangle, or there's also a button in the bottom left of the PC interface, you'll be able to go into milestones. And when we hit population 360, that's when we're going to unlock some things for the city. Now the population numbers for each of these milestones can be different on a per map basis. So I'm hitting 360 is my first milestone. You may have it in the 400s or lower on some other maps. Ultimately, we're gonna try and work our way through all these different milestones. 90,000 being the top one on this map. Some of the maps 
that are smaller, more island focused, less buildable space, may have a population cap of say 36,000 to get to that top milestone. So do keep that in mind. The numbers that we're talking about might be different depending on the map you're building on, but the things that you're unlocking at each are going to be the same. So we'll just do a quick little time lapse here because we've pretty much got everything we need. We just need people to, to move in. So as they do, maybe while we've got money, I can do one more thing here. We'll do one more block of industrial space. And for the industrial space, I'm fine keeping that really tight and condensed. So we'll do that. We'll zone it off. We'll make sure it has water. And then we should be good from there to get to our first milestone. Now, if you have this grid structure, oh, we just hit it, perfect. I'm gonna, uh, let me go finish this pipe real quick. If you have this grid structure, as you continue to build out your town, you can just keep the pipes running right along where they already were, and it will make sure everything is covered nicely. I'll pause the game, again, clicking a left stick or spacebar on PC, and we'll go back into milestones because we just unlocked some stuff for our city. This is the stuff that I wanna talk about in the next episode. So again, we wanna keep these kind of bite-sized. There's a lot to consume when you're first starting out in City Skylines, but the game does a good job of introducing you to concepts slowly, kind of as you need them, as your city grows. So in the next episode, we'll talk about all these things that are unlocked at that first milestone taxes and loans, garbage, healthcare, education, and all the different types of buildings that are on offer to provide those services to the city. Hopefully you found this video useful and your city is off to a successful start. If you did enjoy the video, likes, comments, shares always help the channel and are greatly appreciated. If you're new here, subscribe for more videos in the How To series, which will be coming out soon. And if you've got questions, let me know in the comments down below or better yet, follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. Lots of other fans of cities and of this channel are on there and it's a very helpful community. So stop on by there if you've got questions or just want to talk about cities or other games, we'd be happy to have you join. Until the next one though, when we'll dive into what milestones were just unlocked, this is Move the Mouse signing off.